So this video is on the Sears Kenmore, which was made by Janome. It's a top loading uh, full rotary hook machine. I'm gonna show how to wind a bobbin and thread it and operate the controls. So to wind a bobbin, use a plastic bobbin. Plastic bobbin has a hole in the top on each side. So take your thread, put it on the spool cap and just pull it up and set your spool on. Then you want to wrap the thread around the pretensioner. It's hard to do it one-handed, so I'm gonna turn it. But basically, you wanna just get it underneath that so it has a little bit of tension. Then take your bobbin. I take the thread and I give it a little twist and it makes it uh, stiff on the, whoops, stiff on the tip like this. Pass it from the inside of the bobbin up through that little hole and then pull the thread through. So now the thread goes uh, from the inside of the bobbin out through the top of the hole. Then place the bobbin on the spool, on the spindle, push it to the right. Then on this model, you pull the hand wheel uh, clutch out for the bobbin winder. And then just hold on to the thread like this and let the machine, whoops, got to turn it on. Let her wind. If the, this thing's gonna go flying, so after it goes a little bit, this will eventually break off or you can take your scissors and cut it really close there. Put your finger on the top. I'll keep it from uh, going flying. Otherwise it gets pretty gnarly. And when you get enough, you can just clip the thread and we're ready to go. So you push the spool back, push the uh, clutch back in. Some models you you actually hold the outer wheel and turn the inner wheel towards you. But anyway, uh, next we're gonna lift the bobbin up. We're gonna put it uh, in the bobbin case, which is connected to the machine. So I'm gonna adjust here. The bobbin holder slides forward and just set it aside. The old bobbin can come out. And you take your bobbin thread that you just wound, and if you take it straight off the top where it came and just set her down, then it's correct. But if you don't know, then it should come off the top. So the thread is coming off of the top area here to this way. And when it turns, it should turn counterclockwise like that. So we drop it in the bobbin holder. Now this is really important. There's a little uh, slot right here and a second slot here. So you take the thread, put your finger on the bobbin like this and hook the thread into that little slot and bring it around like that until it clicks into place and then when as the thread exits and goes up to where the needle's going to be you'll see that it's um in that little slot just like that a little hard to see here maybe i should do it one more time just so you can see it so i'm going to angle this down a little bit drop it in i'm going to put my finger on the side here and then take the thread, make sure it hooks in that little spot, bring it around just like that. At that point, you can just leave the thread pointed toward where the needle is, and then you can drop this in place a little bit and push it forward to make sure it's all flat around there. Perfect, so now we're ready to go for threading. So, threading this machine is pretty simple. Um, we're going to start up on the top with our spool coming from here. We're going to take the thread. Sorry, got to adjust here. We're going to go just grab it and hook it underneath this little thing right there. So it'll look about like that. And then 
Oh, I need to, to, to mention a um, thing that's really important is uh, this take-up lever here. This lever here is called the take-up lever. It's really important because as you turn the hand wheel, and always turn the hand wheel only in this direction here. Don't turn it backward this direction. Always this direction. So it'll be counterclockwise if you were to look at it from this side. So as you turn the machine, you'll notice that this lever goes up and it turns around and goes down and it goes up and down and up and down. That indicates the beginning of the stitch, the end of the stitch, and the threading position, which is at the very top. As this gets to the top and before it makes its descent down, you'll see that it kind of changes direction. So it gets up to the top, changes direction and goes down. When it's all the way at the top is the perfect position to thread the machine, to start a seam or to stop a seam. Rather than looking at the needle as you're sewing and you stop your stitch when the needle's up like this, the problem is, is the, that the take-up lever is still down. And if this take-up lever is down, it's not finished. It has to come all the way up to finish and complete the stitch. So now that the take-up lever area is covered, let's continue threading. We have our thread going around the top. We're going to go down this little slot. Oh, and make sure that your presser foot is in the up position when you thread the machine. So raise the presser foot. We're going to go from the spool underneath this little thing down through here and then we're going to go um, trying to do this where um, I'm so sorry that my photography skills are not so hot. Um, Going to take the thread and go around this little thing just like that U shows. Then we're going to go to the right side of that little take up lever, hook it around like that, and then bring it in so it stays hooked. Make sure it goes all the way down in the, into that hook. Then just bring the thread down through this slot. It'll automatically go where it needs to go inside. But you'll notice that it, there's a little um, there's a little thread guide here, this one right here. So just take your thread, you don't even have to open this door, and hold it like this and hook it like that. And it'll go behind this thing but in front of this one. And then there's one more little guide that hooks right above the needle. It's just a little loop right there and just hook it in. Then uh, when you thread the needle, um, whenever you put a needle in the machine, make sure that uh, the needle has a flat side on the back of the shank here. Make sure that that flat side faces the back. So the round part is in the front and the flat side is to the back. And place it in the needle clamp Push it all the way up. Make sure it goes all the way up. It's a little, a little tough. And then tighten the thumb screw with your finger. I wouldn't use a screwdriver. Then if you take uh, a um, sharp pair of scissors, let's get this back here, sorry. Take a sharp pair of scissors, snip the edge. You should be able to thread the needle from the right, or from the front to the back. So just pop it through the eye of the needle. And now it's threaded. So to bring up the thread on the bobbin, all you do is turn the hand wheel one rotation. So hold on to the thread here, bring the, the, the needle all the way down, comes all the way up, make sure your take up lever comes to the top. And you'll notice that you, if you pull on this thread, it will pull the bobbin thread up. See that little loop right there? So then just grab them together 
So now you have the upper thread and the lower thread that have come through the plate, slip it under the foot, and you're ready to sew. So now comes the controls of the sewing machine, how to actually do the stitches. So what you have here is uh, a pattern selector and different patterns that you can select. So right now the little indicator is on straight stitch. You can move it to zigzag and a, a blind hem and a mending stitch. There are a variety of different stitches. Some decorative stitches are green. Uh, the buttonholes are blue. Whoops, I'm sorry, I'm not doing too well here. So you've got a variety of different stitches here. Straight stitch, zigzag, uh, blind hem, mending stitch, buttonhole stitches. These are all decorative green stitches. And then the yellow ones are the, what do they call, stretch stitches on this machine. So um, if we put if we put the control, say, in the zigzag mode, then we can do both a straight stitch and a zigzag. This controller here controls the length of the stitch. So how long the stitch is, if it's really, really tight, would be like a one, that's one millimeter between each stitch. And this is four millimeters between each stitch. Uh, and that is a long stitch. This is a tight stitch. This is about a normal stitch is about two and a half, something like that. And then the other uh, uh, is a width of stitch. So zero would be a straight stitch. There's no zigzag going back and forth. It's just straight. But as we go over, it gets wider and wider and wider. This being a five millimeter wide zigzag, pretty wide. You know, a three millimeter wide zigzag is narrower. A one millimeter wide is very thin and zero is just a straight line. So if we are in the straight stitch, the zigzag pattern, we can set our stitch length. We can put it on zero and still have a straight stitch. So um, let's see. Uh, if you want to do any of these patterns, the orange stitch goes all the way from zero to four, which means any of these stitches can be a variety of different lengths. Um, the buttonhole stitch is going to be a tight stitch, so it's going to be in that blue range over here. If you want a green stitch, you're probably going to want to be in a pretty tight stitch, and you can play around with these. If you want any of the yellow stitches, then you have to move your controller all the way to that stretch stitch mode. But uh, normal use, you're gonna use just a straight stitch over here on length of about two and a half uh, or so. So um, other, other things about this machine, you have uh, attachments inside. If you wanna take this off, just instead of opening the lid like this, put your finger all the way underneath and just pull it forward and it'll come off. This way you can do like sleeves, pant legs, anything tubular. And then to put it back on, you see this little slot here, there's a little piece. So just set it inside like that and snap it in place. And then it's a compartment again. And this gives you a flat area. There's carry handle on the top. Um, any other controls? Uh, yes, there's one more control here, and that is this control here, and this is a pressure regulator. So the foot is always pressing down on the fabric, okay? So this, you can turn the pressure back all the way, and there's hardly any pressure at all, um, which you would hardly ever use that. So two and then three, and you'll notice that the three has a little square around it, which means uh, the normal tension or a normal pressure. So speaking of tension, this is the tension dial. Um, the tension dial goes from zero to nine. But the normal range, you'll notice the eight, seven, six, 
Six has a black square around it, and then five and four also have a black square around it, and then the black square goes away. So what that means is um, set your tension normally on about six. That's for most tensions. If you're doing, say, a decorative stitch here or even a buttonhole, then you would dial this down from six down to like four so that the knots show on the back side. So on this particular machine, it's about on six. Um, other than that, uh, I think that is gonna handle it. We know now how to wind a bobbin. We know how to thread it, insert the needle, know how to put the bobbin in. We know how to uh, change the stitches. We know what the length of stitch is, the width of stitch. We know about the pressure regulator, and we know about the tension. So if you, uh, oh, one last thing, reverse. You have to hold the reverse button down for it to reverse. When you let go, it'll go forward again. Other than that, it has a uh, on and off switch, which turns the motor and the lamp off. And that is your Sears Kenmore sewing machine lesson for the day.